at all. So what it means is that when I do this projection, I'm not changing the Frobenius norm by 0.7. Okay. Which means that I've taken the squared length along here for V1, the squared length along here for V2, and if I if I add those up, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the sum of these is going to be the uh, um, Frobenius norm of P. So I'm I'm not losing any squared mass by doing this projection. And so as long as you have an orthogonal basis that you're doing this on, you're not losing any of the mass. So in particular, if I look at the, the squared length from the origin to say P4, I can write this in two ways. I can look at the, the y coordinate squared plus the x coordinate, that'd be 25 plus 4. I can also look at the projection length along V1 squared plus the projected length along V2 squared. And that's also going to give me 29. So to get the distance, and that's because if you look at the distance along here, let's say this is some length C, this is some length A, and this is some length B, then the, the um, you know by the, uh, um, by the Pythagorean theorem that C squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. It's also true that, that I could also, so if that a and b correspond to these, the black lines, and the green lines corresponded to this um, a prime and, and b prime, then this is also equal to a prime squared plus b prime squared. It's just a different decomposition. So squared length, you can decompose like this. Okay. Um, um, so let me finish up. So there's a, um, so what's, what's a, so, so, so what you want to do in order to, if you want to take a matrix and you want to capture kind of the core part of this matrix, you want to use some subset of these singular values. You usually want to say, what is the top k of them? And you can know how important they are by looking at, the, at these singular values. And if the mass gets small, these are going to be, these are in sorted order, remember, so the biggest one is first. The mass is smaller. Once it gets to a small amount, you know you haven't lost a lot in the projections just by looking at these, these um, singular values. So you pick some number k of these um, singular values, and then what you do is you, um, instead of looking at, at u, uh, instead of looking at v, what you do is you take vk, which is equal to v1, v2, up to vk. You take u and you get uk, which is equal to u1, u2, up to uk. And you do the same thing with, with S, which, um, um, so S is what I erased here, but this you do sigma 1, sigma 2, so K, you go up to sigma K, and then you uh, still have to have this, um, these zeros at the bottom. And so then you can get back a matrix PK, which is going to be UK, SK, VK transpose. And this is going to be very similar to P, but it's going to have all of the points. You're going to solve all your points, but they're going to lie in this lower dimensional subspace. This is all this stuff I told you about projecting and so forth and transferring to the points. That's handled if, if, you, if you truncate these matrices properly. So if you have a very large dimensional space, you want to find a small dimensional subspace which is going to capture this. You cut off all these matrices at some value k, and, and you multiply them back together, and you get this projected point set. And these are now simpler. These are the core components, the core modes of the variation. And these are this is why they call it principal component analysis. These vectors are the principal components of the data. And you know exactly how important they are 
by looking at these at these values, these these um, singular values. So, um, so 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 when you're dealing, so the the okay, so yeah, I, I probably spent too long going through the the how to try and think about the um, 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 the geometry of this, but. The point is if you have a high dimensional, say, point set or data set, you can find kind of the low dimensional parts of it, the major modes of the variation of the data, um, by doing the principal component <coughs> analysis and then extracting out this part of it. And so whenever you have high dimensional data, this should really be one of the first things you think of doing to try and simplify and find the kind of the lower dimensional subspace. And it's, it's, it's really easy to do if you have, you know, you're at that level. So you just pick k, up, you just pick a value of k where the, that, the last value is just like as small as you want it to be. Pretty much, yeah. So there's no, there's there's not one right way to pick k, right? You, it's the same problem as in clustering. You needed how many clusters do you pick? So you can use some of the same techniques where you can look at these values that are already <laughs> sorted for you and see when they start to drop off. And in a lot of data, there's this high dimensional data, but there's some lower dimensional phenomena which is causing it. And you'll see kind of these values get really low really quickly. Um, and, and so it'll seem like an obvious place to cut them off if you look at it. Sometimes you get these heavy tail data where they kind of um, like kind of keep going. And that the, there could be a lot of, they're, they're pretty small, but there are a lot of them they can add up. And, that's when it's harder to figure it out. But usually, there'll be some nice cutoff that you can do, especially in much smaller data. In really, really big data is when you start seeing these weird phenomena like that, the scale of the, the graph of these colors. Um, yeah, OK, so uh, if you're interested in how this relates to the, the eigenvalues and stuff I talked about a while ago, that's described in the notes as well. So these are, if you do the PCA on the on like, um, if you do the SVD on P transpose P, or um, then the, then you're going to get out the eigenvalues instead of the singular values. And so, forth. so, all right. So, um, have a good spring break. Um, hope you get some some um, preliminary stuff done for your projects for um, the Monday after you get back. Are, are you here all right? I should pretty much be here. I haven't made any plans yet, but I might have gone for a day or two or so.